Well, I've been involved in it now for about 32 years that I can remember. This operation has been here for about, uh, I think we've been here 26 years now. And uh, basically what's happening is we uh, go to the field and extract the juice. We do run a horse-drawn mill as well, uh, just for the show, but we, we go to the field and extract the juice and haul it in in large tanks, and we dump it in, uh, in these vats here behind us, in these big tanks. Family started moving in in early 1965, and my parents came in January of 1965. My oldest brother was born in March of 1965. The sorghum making operation has, has been an attraction for people from the very beginning. And it, it amazes me every year how many people show up. My, at the beginning of the season, sometimes my faith will waver and I'm like, well, this year, it was a good year last year, but this year, some, nobody will, will, probably not as many people will come. And so I'm always amazed at how many people do show up. And I, I think it has a lot to do with, with our family connectedness and our, our people want that. They want to see it. And I'm very, very proud to be part of that. Daddy and Grandpa all said that this was sugar cane and the end product was molasses. Daddy's dead and gone and it's the gospel truth. What he said is true. Well, he was right and so far it is a sweet cane, but it's actually sorghum cane. It's not sugar cane. Sugar cane actually is grown further south in Florida and Louisiana and sugar cane is actually boiled down to make sugar out of it. This being sorghum cane, no matter how much we boil it, we cannot boil it into sugar. It, all it does, the longer we boil it, the thicker it gets. No matter how, it just, just can't boil it into sugar. So the correct name for it is sorghum syrup. But everybody calls it molasses and that's fine. And uh, we, we know what everybody's talking about. The two previous years we had a serious drought and we thought that was bad. You know, our production was way down. And then of course last year fuel prices went up so much that um, we did increase our price last year. However, this year with all the rain, it, um, it was all, there was also a lot of cooler weather and Cain likes hot weather to really do well. And so it did cut our crop way down, probably about in half. And the production, of course, is, is way down. It's been very hard to get in the fields and, and uh, get, the, get the harvest in. And, um, I guess we'll just learn to do with less <laughs> because we did not go up in price this year. Uh, fuel prices did come down from last year, so we didn't feel like we would go up in price this year. Yeah, it's taken us at least an extra month because of doing it by hand because of the wet weather. Well, back in the old days, it was always done, done by hand. Uh, we actually have got some machinery now to, to harvest it. It cuts it and grinds the juice out of it and uh, pumps the juice into a tank pulled behind. But we've had uh, pretty serious wet weather this year and because of it we're not able to drive through the field. So that's the reason we're doing it by hand now again. The way it was done here about 20 years ago was uh, this way and this way only. In a long day, uh, 250 gallons of juice would be pr produced in a day. Whereas with modern machinery out in the field, they can produce 2,500 gallons of juice in a day. So we're looking at approximately 10 times as much. But then you're looking at a lot more horsepower too. We've, of course, do it on a much larger scale now. And it, it's caused us to modernize a little bit, if you want to say it that way. We were more traditional. Uh, when I was younger, we, we extracted the, all the juice with, these horse -drawn, with the horse-drawn mills. And now we extract most of it in the fields with uh, tractor-powered presses, hydraulic-powered presses. And, uh, and then, of course, our mill is a lot bigger. Our pan is a lot bigger. Uh, right now, mom and dad raised uh, seven boys and, uh, and one sister. There's eight of us. Uh, four, uh, three of us boys and our sister 
are involved working at the sorghum mill and, and making sorghum and, and our parents. The other, uh, the other four boys are do uh, other public work. As you can see these young, young boys here are pretty good help to me. Amazing what these young fellows can do. This is my brother Eddie that just came to the field. We're going to use the tractor here and uh, load the cane up in bins so we can take it to the next step. And that's what, after that, we'll take it off these bins and grind it. And his daughter Charlotte there is driving the tractor. So she'll be driving and we'll be loading. Um, not only the working, but the the, our belief system, you know, our, our, our connectedness to God, and, and, you know, we do try to stay connected uh, together. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I see a big difference between my family and, okay, you can come on. and the outside, yeah. There's a big difference, and, and I like the way we do it. <laughs> I really do. It, it is a lot of work. It is a team effort. And... Uh, I think it's good for the families here, too. They tend to stick together more doing the same thing together. Sorghum cane used to be milled and has been milled in Tennessee for probably 150 years or more. Just about every small farm in Tennessee raised a patch of sorghum cane at one time. Uh, often it became a community kind of thing where there might be one or two mills in a community and people would load their wagons up and come for miles around just to do this. Today I'm one of the cooks, so I'm in charge of making sure that the the product gets cooked down to the right thickness. Uh, you don't want it too thick and you don't want it too thin. It's kind of a little art you have to learn. It doesn't take long to learn it. Anybody can do it. As we start letting it on the pan, this stream of juice right here, we, we let it pour into the tank or into the, the cooking pan. And as it starts boiling, there's a, a residue that comes off of it. It's called skimmings or impurities. Foam or the skimmings, we call it the skimmings that uh, come, comes off the juice, we feed it to the pigs and, and it's sweet and they love it and they get really fat. <laughs> As it continues to boil, it travels down this pan and around every baffle and that's kind of what we call our pre-cooker. You can see through the steam, we're pouring out here into this pan. When it gets finished here, we open this valve up and we let it pour into this little tub here and this is a screen, like a, a filter screen. From this little tub, the sorghum gets pumped from a pipe into this thing here. It's called a, a stack of cooling trays, and there's about seven trays in here. It's not forced with, uh, with a fan or anything. It just air cools from the time it leaves the pan till it gets to the tank. It cools at about 100 degrees from, from the finishing uh, process to the, to the bottle. And we use the steam now. When I was growing up, we had a fire under the pan and that was what provided the heat to boil the syrup. Well, now we use the steam, and so it, we, it, it can, we, we can do a lot more in a shorter period of time. It only takes about 25 minutes from start to finish till it gets thick enough and it's off the pan. In a good day, we can do up to 22, 2300 gallons of raw juice, which will process down to about uh, 250, 275, it depends how high the sugar ratio is, sometimes as good as 300 gallons in a day off of those 22, 2300 gallons of, of raw juice. I was raised up around it and I've been doing it all my life. When I uh, became, when I was a teenager, I uh, somewhat rebelled it. I was said there's got to be a better way to make a living than this. This is just too much hard work and yeah, I did some other public work and found out that the world is actually a mean place and what I'd learned from my dad was a pretty good thing to do. So uh, I went back to the farm in the six months later and decided this is where my heart is and that's what I like to do.